guys. I appreciate it. Um, let me just kind of start with uh, why I'm doing the series on doing this, uh, this this one here on perch and trout because well they basically are two of the, the two species that I fish for the most because they are the most plentiful. Um, you can pretty much go anywhere on the lakes and find them. That's, that's the one advantage of the easy question I have here is where can you find them? Well, the answer is pretty easy. Pretty much every lake in the hills has got got trout or perch or both as well as various other species. Um, but you know, with such an with such an abundance of, of them, you know, you can be looking. For, there's so many different techniques and lures and whatnot out there. It can be kind of confusing. Well, what would you use specifically to target uh, these species, or how to or kind of best put ways to find them? Um, the program's going to go over some of the lakes that I that I like to fish on a lot, where I've got can catch a lot of these species. Um, I'm going to go over the lake maps that are free and easy to get a hold of online. Uh, a lot of the gear and tackle that I use to you know, for it to be better efficient on the ice, as well as Safety and then uh, conservation of these two species, because even though they're abundant, it's important to uh, promote conservation of them as well. Uh, first things first, lakes target with perch, which looks like they are starting to fish for now. That some lakes are frozen over, especially like Sheridan Lake. It's one of the uh, bigger lakes that I go to for for perch. Uh, it's a pretty popular lake. From the same time of year, you can go there, and there's always boats fishing for trout or perch for the most part. Um, it's the lake that everybody likes to hit, hit when, as soon as there's a walkable ice, everybody will start hitting it for perch. Um, I look at, there's a lot of uh, lead lines, a lot of points, a lot of different depths in the area um, that you can target them at because the lake is a little bigger than, than the small lakes around here. Another good one is Deerfield. Uh, you know, it's a deeper lake, but there are a lot of also, there are also a lot of points and bays in the area, especially like the Gold Run area or along over by the highway. Good area to find a lot at, and it's also one of the last lakes to thaw because of how high it is. Uh, the example I said there, I, I fished until April 12th last year. Uh, the last time out, and the ice was still about, about a foot and a half thick on Deerfield when I went up there. It wasn't the best ice, but it was still walkable ice at that time. So I never, I never fished in April up until last year. It was a good winter last year. Uh, so thanks for trout. Deerfield again. Good mix of uh, rainbow brook trout and splake. Never caught a splake. It's a it's a, it's a brook trout uh, lake trout hybrid. Uh, but they're, they're not really, they're not very big, but they do they do put a pretty good fight if you do, if you do get, get one of them. A silver lake, a smaller lake around here. Got a lot of browns and rainbows swimming around in it. Uh, provides some pretty decent so far this year, from what I've read in the uh, paper. Um, good place to take kids because a smaller lake they can walk around. It's also higher lake, so the ice freezes up pretty quick. Uh, Roe Bay Lake, a little bit smaller yet, but uh, it's one of the first ones I hit every year because it freezes. Well, it's one of the quicker lakes to freeze because it's not in this lake. Um, I was out there on the 22nd of the well, 22nd last month, and there was about four inches of ice then. So, by the minimum, that lake would be, be on the safe side. And then Pactola, uh, once the bay started to freeze, that's when a lot of you see. I've seen a lot of guys going out there for uh, besides your northern the lake trout or the the rainbows like to hang out in those bays too, especially up in like Jimmy Gulch area. But if you do want to go for the big, you know, for the big lakers, then you got to wait till the deeper water freezes. So that's when everybody starts getting out there for those big, you know, 20, 10, 15, 20, 25 pounders that uh, keep hearing about the last few years. Um, and using with lake maps, uh, I get my maps from the Game of Fish website uh, because they're free, and most of the lakes, except for some of the smaller ones, are available. Um, it's, a, you know, it's free, to, free to print off. And I've got, I've got, we've got shared lake on here, fully contoured, um, so you can use those. Doesn't cost anything. Sylvan Lake is even is one of the small lakes that's actually on here. Uh, Deerfield, Stockade, and even New Underwood Dam is also is also on here. Is also here. I like to these bigger lakes. I like to cut, make different copies of the lakes, like the different areas. Like I've got Deerfield, I've got the Bay Area by the highway here, and then on the next page I've got. Right, next bit, I've got the rest of the lake, so that's closer. But these are, that's a nice, it's a good resource to use. Um, I also will start, these are all new maps, I've been marking them on fishing fish this year on them, so I can go back to those same areas uh, next time I'm out. Uh, the best locations to look for on those maps tend to be off points or in basins or bays. Uh, you want to look for where the depth drops quickly, that tends to be an area where fish tend to concentrate. Um, or if you're in the basin areas, you can look and kind of using, if you have, if you have a flash area, you can look for where the where the where the weed beds are at between just from the colors on your on the screen there. If it's a green color, you've got weeds. If it's all red, 
it's a pretty it's a hard bottom or a muddy bottom. And that's the Game and Fish website. And I always encourage people to take advantage of resource. It does beat spending you know hundred dollars or better on those on those chips. It may not be quite as detailed, but, but they are good. It's a good free resource to use. That's available. This is just one of the examples of of Sheridan Lake, like areas I like to target. I like to take at this point off of here where you've got all these different depths, you've got these, this quick drop and depth is a good place to hit. Um, there's, there's a little bit of kind of, of a bay in here. This is usually a pretty good area for perch that I got in the tournament last year, so where I found most of my fish. Uh, 3 to 5 area, there's this little inlet here, and you got cattails all along here, but you got pretty decent depth changes there. That's a good place to target them. And then later in the year, the perch will start moving out into this into the deeper water here. Um, this little island here tends to produce some pretty big, there's a lot of guys who fish around that during the tournament just because of how quickly the depth changes. Uh, safety, especially with this wonderful weather we've been having lately. Uh, always, it's always, your normal priority is always to make sure you're being safe on the ice. Um, just because we're walking boys right now, right now doesn't mean with this weather that it hasn't been at the top of the mushy. Um, if I'm on a lake that I haven't been on, or it's the first time I've been on for the year, I don't have a, don't have a spud bar to chip away at the ice. I, have to, I just drill, I'll go on about every five, ten feet and drill a hole through the ice until I'm satisfied that the ice is thick enough and uh, hard enough. But uh, especially when you're going the first time, always bring a friend if you can. Carry ice picks. I would recommend you, know, you can buy these for seven or eight dollars. So they're pretty cheap, but they but if you ever do fall through, they will help you to get out if you're to help you get out of the ice. Um, these ones here are a clam model that's put together nicely and you can wear it over your head. So if you do fall through, they're right there so you can grab them and get yourself out. Also important to wear I like to wear some cleats or some spikes on your feet. Um, just to give you better grip on either on the ice or if you were to fall through it gives you something else to grab on the edge as you're trying to pull yourself out. So it's an important accessory to use. Um, and also rope is also a nice feature if you've got it. Because then you got the rope, a nice little bag here, and you got, of course, those same ice picks. Staying warm on the ice, is you can, you can enjoy your time on the ice if you're cold. Uh, pretty much any insulated coat, bibs, pants, warm boots, is uh, pretty much, you got, you got to have it to go out. Unless you go out on a day like today, when it's 60 degrees outside. Um, windproof, waterproof features are, are better, just because you know, you're going to get, you're probably going to get wet. And this, and the, with the weather around here, it's usually always windy. You know, there's not a lot of calm days. The ice fishing suits are the best way to go because they are windproof, waterproof, and a little bit of insulation to keep you warm. I myself can use the Clam Ice Armor suit um, just because it has all those features, and I have yet to be on the, be on the weather where I couldn't. I could not have a shack and just have that, and I'd probably be okay well for the most part. It's a, a great investment to make if you really want to get into ice fishing. Augers. Because if you're going to get to if you're going to get to the fish, you have to do ice first. But you got to decide if you want to buy it. Are you going to go with hand or electric styles? Like uh, like you know, last year, Clam had this brand new uh, conversion plate here, where you can actually use an 18 volt lithium uh, drill, and that works pretty. That works really really swell. If you I used one of these last year, a buddy of mine had. It's uh, it's light. It's really lightweight. Drills to the ice really fast. If you, if you don't want if you don't want to invest in a big gas auger, that's a little bit different. Or if you do, you've got your dish with a gas and propane if you want some little more power or a little bigger, such as you know, the Jiffy propane or the clam uh, edge auger. I myself have the Jiffy, have a Jiffy 34 myself. It works really, works really well, but you know, like that conversion kit, 13 pounds probably, this one is about 34. So it makes quite a difference, if, especially if you're going to be moving around a lot to have a little bit lighter auger. As far as uh, different rods and reels, when it comes to those two species, uh, ultralight and light actions is the way to go. I don't like to use anything heavier than a light action just because of the size of the fish, and when you catch them, the fish is all, it's also a really fun to fight. You can catch a good sized trout on ultralight rods. There's a lot of techniques and specific rods out there these days with different prices. Um, I also recommend spring bobbers, especially for perch fishing. They are quite, they're a handy little, they're a handy little accessory, but they on those light biting fish, they will, you can see that bite a lot easier. I've got one here on this, on this particular rod. It just pulls straight out from the rod, but it's a nice additional 
you see, you'll see those, those little bites a lot faster with that than you will if you're just using <coughs> the end of the rod itself. And for jigging, use ultralights with a very with a really with a fast tip, which bunch all of us have, and then the, the spring bobber if you don't have an ultralight rod. For spoons, light rods with a, with a nice tip are a good way because you know, those fish are still going to be just tapping away at your bait. You still want to see that tip of yours going, which is why a fast tip is a is a nice feature to have. Here's just some examples. And like I said, here are those uh, here are those spring bobbers. There, that uh, you can find from any of the stores. This is a this is the True Blue series, the Clam True Blue series rod, which I have one of those up here. It's a really nice ultralight rod um, for, for for a combo. And this one also I attach a spring bobber to. Uh, uh, that one runs about thirty-five to forty bucks for that combo. I mean, there are some twenty-dollar combos out there, but you don't get near the the, the, the feel and the quality if you spend a little more on your rods. Uh, inline reels, like this one down, like this uh, clam one down here, I've gotten really popular the last few years. I use one myself. It's uh, an eagle claw variety, but uh, for fish, if you're fishing under 30 foot of water, these are really nice to have because these reels don't don't twist your line. So when you're based down there, you're, it's not your jig isn't twirling around like this. It's holding still, and straight like it should. So they're a nice, if you, ever try, if you ever want to try one of these, I would say try one, see if you like it. It works well in shallow water, but if you get deeper, then you want just your standard spinning reels. What was that called again? Yeah, this one here is called an inline reel, but this one here is a, an eagle claw variety. You think those are about, those are eagle claw. Eagle claw inline, they're 25 bucks at the Cabela's or Shields. But that one here has a free spool feature, which is a really nice uh, feature, because you can actually just push a button and your reel goes down by itself. And pull out like after the song. And tackle. Now, there's a lot of tackle out there, but for these two you know, spoons, small and small jigs, those are your, those are going to be your best bet for them. And you know, the size wise, I like to use 16 ounce jigs with a size 10 or 12 hook. The tungsten, which came out a few years ago, it really got popular the last few years, is probably the best you can buy as far as a good a good. Uh, Good lure because it's, it's a lot heavier than or more dense than the lead is, so it'll sink a lot faster. Especially when you're, when you're fishing for perch and the school's going through, you want to really get down there fast after you catch a fish. So tungsten is a good is a way to go with me. Uh, most of my lures, if you if you don't check out the jigs in that jig box, they're mostly all they're mostly all tungsten now. Um, but uh, that's the, that's what I thought of the spoons, 16 pounds, 8 pounds. You don't have to go much bigger than that if you're going with when you're targeting perch and trout. With spoons, I like to use those when I first hit a hole generally. I put them down there. I like things with bright, shiny colors or, or think that anything makes noise. And you just you kind of just pound it and jig it aggressively. And you know, the, first, the fish that are most aggressive are going to be the ones that come in first. That's a good way to see if you've got any fish in the area if you, if you start, with, start with a spoon first. You'll find the aggressive fish first and you can go from there. Well, with spoons anywhere from six inches to a foot, you want to, you just want to, you just want to pop it up. That's the best way. That's your best way to fish. And um, that's how that's usually how I teach how I teach, I teach people who have never been out if they come out with me. Um, like this, this young man here came. This is his first time on the ice last year. Uh, he became he became equal. He caught a lot of fish just using these these little simple jigging methods that I was showing him over. So that was his first fish he ever caught. Not other horse days last year. As far as jigs to use, this here is this is clams lineup uh, from last year. Um, I recommend these. These are all tungsten, so they're all going to sink. They're all going to sink fast, and they're available in a variety of colors. You've got your plain, the, the drop, the dingle drop with that little chain thing that you, you're just sitting there put quivering it. That thing is just shaking. It's a good attractor for fish. The ant drop here is probably my favorite. It, uh, I got I got the most perch from last year. The duck bill, which kind of swims around in a circle because of, the, because of the shape. The half ant, which works pretty good on, uh, which is a vertical jig, works well on perch and bluegills if you want to target with those. And the epoxy here, which has a little Swarovski crystal on it, so it has a little shimmer effect under the water on a sunny day. And they're brand new from this year. They've got these, the uh, drop XL and the dingle drop XL. They're the same as the uh, drop and dingle drop, but they've got a, a bigger hook on for, for bigger baits, for bigger plastics if you want to go that route. But there, I said they're all tungsten. And last year I used them all pretty much exclusively, and 
they were really good, really good jigs. Most any color would, would uh, work for that. But being that tungsten variety was, was just awesome to have. The different spoons. This is this McClam's line up here. We've got the bomb spoon, the blade spoon, the speed spoon, and then brand new for the year was this uh, time bomb spoon, which I do have um, a couple in here. The thing about that the spoon is that you want noise makers. That puts out a lot of noise when you're jigging because of this, because of this copper this brass bearing here and then that, and that ceramic bead. But that's a good good bait to use. Guess what was around. Oh, here's a couple of the uh, the epoxy drop and the drop. Guess what's around too. But uh, you know, on, on the, on the, if, you're, if you're finding a lot of fish on find fish but they won't bite, if you're using a flash or a camera, uh, the speed spoon here with that little with that, with that dangling hook is a good thing to use because that it's got the attractor here on the color, but if they're not biting, you just barely can move your rod, and this and that chain is going to be moving around. So a really tough bite. That's why I usually go to just when I use the speed spoon here, which really well, especially when especially when the pressure's rising and the pressure shut off. And some other type of gear to use? Flashers, of course. Like I use the Humber, I use the Humber 45 here. Works so really well. I got the digital depth on the screen here. Um, a lot of guys, a lot of guys though, are diehards of XLR. It's probably the most popular flasher that probably the most popular flasher in the country. But uh, underwater cameras are not, not necessarily a necessity, but I've used this one for a couple years now, and it's really nice to find, to find a different. Uh, Transitions below from, from gravel to rock to weeds. Is that, yeah. is that a combination? No, this is this is a separate. Oh, you're not getting it. Yeah. This is yeah, the, the camera. So I just have it mounted here with this uh, with this on. Here. Oh, that way I can know it's always available to me if I need to pop it down and pick a fish. But sometimes you, you, if you, you're seeing fish below that are not biting, you put that camera down, you can see what the species is down there, and you can change your presentation. Like I was talking about before, work work last year when I was fishing on Sheridan. I found a big school of what I thought was perch below me, but I couldn't get them to bite on anything with my, with my jig presentation. Put the camera down, there was a bit, see what was a big school of crappie. Change the lure presentation, start catching crappie. You know, so it was a nice feature to have. Uh, the Arctic Warrior here is a nice dead stick feature that the clam makes. And how that one works, you just, put, you just attach your rod with, to this, uh, with this, this mount here, right under the water, as soon as the fish bites, it pulls your line a little bit. Pops up, sets hook for you. It's a good, you know, it's a good desk. If you don't like to use tip hooks, that's a good, uh, a good uh, tool to use. And then, of course, you've got your shacks. So I got this is a, this is a uh, one of Cabell's ones over there, one of their hubs, and then this is my uh, Legend Thermal. Uh, if you ever, if you want to take a seat in it, check it out. Or after the program, go right ahead. It's a really nice shack. This one man shack. Uh, they're nice to have, but if you have like a suit or something that's going to improve. Listen, that's something you always that you need all the time. So if you're, gonna get, if you're gonna get one thing between these things, the suit is definitely the best thing to get. And plastics, which I have started using a lot the last, the last couple of years. Uh, but the last few years, most fishermen probably wouldn't have used them because they weren't the best quality and they would you know, they stiffen up in the cold water. But uh, they've, they've really gotten big the last few years. People were making them. They're making them softer, they're very supple, they stay nice and loose no matter what. And they're a really hot commodity, especially when it comes to fishing for panfish, perch, and trout. They're actually, in some cases, even better than the live bait if you're using minnows or if you're using maggots or wax worms. And because they stay on the hook longer, they don't be replaced as often. It's a very, so there's other, it's a nice feature to use if you're tired of switching out and putting on fresh bait every time you catch a fish. They'll last you a half a dozen or more fish um, pretty easily. And plus with their motion, being as, being as soft and supple as they are, even beginners can use them. It doesn't take much to use them. All you gotta do is sit there and just move it back and forth and you're gonna see you're gonna, that, that action you're creating on your plastic is, is gonna be, well, even anybody, anybody can use them for the most part. So different types. Uh, JNS Custom Jigs makes, a, it makes, some of the, makes some of the best plastics that I've used. Um, this is what they, these are the models they make. They make the Ice Mite Magnum, the standard Ice Mite, and the Ice Mite Junior. Yeah. They've also got the Paddle Bug and this Gojo, which I started using uh, this season. Works really well on the, on, up at New Underwood. Caught a lot of bluegills, caught a lot of birds with that Gojo. The action on those two legs moving back and forth is really easy to watch. 
And this is one of my favorite ones that I used last year for JNS. It's the Versamite. The thing about the Versamite is you can actually, okay, here, it's actually, a, there's three ways you can use this. You can either use the whole thing, like that right there, or if, or if you want to see if you want to downsize your presentation, you can use the back half, you've got those little tails hanging off, or you can use the front half, where you have those little arms flailing out. I'll pass around a little bag here of some of, some of theirs. You can take some out and feel them if you want. But they're all nice plastic. Um, they're not sold in stores around here, though. You do have to go to the internet in order to order them. But they are, they're only like 2 or $3 for a pack of 10. Um, and they're good, good quality plastic. They last you a long time. Uh, JNSCustomJigs.com is where you can get this from. You know, both have both live bait and plastics have their place. There are some days when plastic works better than live bait, and vice versa. I, when I was like, when I was out of New Underwood the first time, I used plastics, caught a lot of fish. The next, I went out there on Saturday this past Sunday, um, and I tried I tried them. I could get fish to come in, but they wouldn't they wouldn't commit. So I switched to live bait, caught and caught caught a lot of fish. So they both they just kind of, kind of the fish kind of determines what you're going to use. If you want to use, you know, start with one and go to the other. That's a good little way to go. If you're if you're still kind of new to plastics, uh, the best best thing I can tell you is start with live bait. And if the fish are biting really good, try switching up with the plastic and see what happens. You know, if, if you start catching a few fish on, you gain more confidence in plastics. Because when it comes to plastic, that's what you need confidence. Because uh, you're used to using live, using live bait. You know, you're thinking like, why would I switch to this if it, you know, if it doesn't smell and taste the same? But it's the action that attracts the fish to bite on plastics. And Clam also came out with some plastics uh, last year. And they've got the, uh, the Jamie, the Poli, the Maki, the Draggy, and new for this year, the Minnow and the Minnow Head. Um, I've got some of those in my plastics folder. Uh, here is some, uh, some of the Makis. Pass those around. They got the two, and got the two tendrils with the long tail. These also work pretty well. The Jamie is one of my favorites to use on trout. If I'm, if I'm going with that, if I'm going there. I said I've got a lot of these. A lot of these are up here, here in, my, in, this, in this folder, so you can come on and take a look at them if you want. Different colors, different types of styles. But uh, like I said hey, it's, a, it's a technique. It's just a confidence thing with plastics, and I would, I would encourage you to give them a shot. And plastics are not expensive. You can buy these for two or three dollars at uh, Cabela's and other Clam and various other brands that are out there right now. Um, but you know, for the price, I encourage you. I encourage you to try just a game grab a pack or two, try them out. Red and white. We're going through this color. This is an example when I was out in New Underwood. Um, you got you know, fish oxygen from bluegills and bluegills and perch. This was, this was the day that the, the plastics were working really good. You got these two perch, these two gills here, and that's with that purple, with that purple uh, genie player, and these two here. You got the uh, that's the gojo, the purple go, the purple gojo from JNS. Uh, they work really well. Purple was the, was the color that day. So the fish that you see the on. They didn't really care so much about the JV, it was, it was the color of the plastic that they seemed to prefer. Selective harvest, catch and release, something that I practice. Uh, if you catch the big one, what do you do? You keep it or release it? And really, it's up, it's up to you guys. Um, nobody's going to tell you whether to keep a fish or not keep a fish. It's probably your decision, as long as it's legal, legal, legal limits. But uh, conservation groups like to encourage us to throw the big ones back because those are the ones that have survived the longest, they've got the best genes to get to get to that size. And if you keep them in, keep them in the water, they can you know, breed the next, the next generation, they'll have those same stronger genes. Well, you know, you keep the smaller ones, we'll let the bigger ones go after taking a few photos, of course. Uh, it's important that as anglers now, we try and preserve our, our waters and the fish species in them for the, for the future by practicing selective harvest. Keep the population strong. Uh, check out the Nonprofit organizations recycle fish. They are good. They're a nonprofit organization that I joined a few couple years ago. Um, they really they encourage you know keep the shores clean, you know catch and release. Uh, it's a good group to be. It's a good organization to know that you can join for uh, free. You get these little packets and they got tips for uh, you know how you know, the best ways to take a they can take a good picture with the fish, make it look bigger than it actually is. <laughs> They had this actually demonstrated this couple of years ago, so it works pretty well. The fish, the fish looks three times bigger if you, if you know how to hold them. Especially when you're fishing for like bluegills or something like that, you know, or perch. 
Um, you know, maybe one of the big things I've discovered the last couple of years is as free as online forums and organizations. Uh, you'd be surprised the information you can find on these different uh, different forums on the internet. You know, there's everybody provides tips, they provide tricks, they provide uh, you know here, if you want to ask a question, ask a question. You can usually get an answer. A lot of a lot of pro staffers and Plan and Fraybill and other companies are, are on these forums, you know, so they're there to answer questions pretty quickly. I use them if I have, I use I use them really a lot just to get questions asked, or even to even to kind of if somebody has a question, I can usually answer their question too sometimes. And it's a great it's a great resource to use. You've got uh, different ones here. You got IceTeam.com. Uh, you, know, you can join them free. IceHawks Anonymous. Good or good. It's a good that's a good Facebook page to to like if you have a page or not. We also have a website. And the big one I use is Hotspot Outdoors. Uh, that forum I have learned so much using that forum. It, uh, you can join, it's, a, you're free, it's free to join, but the, the questions they get asked from all across the, you know, the ice belt in Wisconsin, Minnesota, North Dakota, South Dakota, Iowa, Nebraska, and the technique and the different things everybody asks, so a lot of times you can use those, or even if you've got enough experience and you know the answer to the questions, you can, you can reply to their questions. It's a good resource to use. I, if you're online and want to learn more about the sport, that's a website that you can definitely use. In conclusion, the abundance of these abundance of these perch and trout in the lakes makes for a great a great trip and a good chance of catching fish. Um, uh, make use of the lake maps that are available to you, regardless if you use the free ones or if you want to use if you actually want to get the chips. Uh, they will make your time on the ice a lot more efficient and a lot more productive because you can see where those areas are where you can catch where you can find fish in general. Be sure to use the right gear. You know, whether, it's, whether it's the gear I have here or other gear that's out there, there's a lot of different varieties of gear out there um, that you can use. And best of all is have fun, because that's really what ice fishing is all about. Regardless of whether fish are biting hard or not, it's just nice to get out there on the lakes. Um, it is, it's my favorite time of year. I like, I like ice fishing I like more open water fishing. Um, if you have any questions at all, I have an email, so my email is Dr. R. Gravy Warren Hotmail. I'm also on Facebook under that name as well. And um, you can ask me, feel free to ask me any questions if you have any, uh, or if you want if you want to have you know, questions or concerns, or if you want to, if you want to go, if you want me to, if you want to go out and see what's out there. I'm more than willing to uh, take pretty much anybody out if they want to go out on any lake and catch these, these species. And I've also got a website. That you can go to as well. It's the Dr. R. Grady. It's a little bit long. Uh, Dr. R. Grady one dot wix dot com slash Dr. Auger eighty one. But on the website, you I have got. Uh, you can ask me questions. You can contact me. I've got some featured products. Of different you know, some of these different litmus, different litmus I talked about. There's links to all the different sites that I've talked about. Clam, JNS. Ice Team, Ice Hawks Anonymous. I've got uh, a lot of my seminars I've been doing, I post them on here now. Uh, these are last year's. And then uh, I'm also doing some videos from the field, or on the ice this year. This is from a, the second New Underwood trip here, uh, if you ever want to take a look. I talk about you know, different techniques I'm using, different lures, uh, just different presentations, um, just to help uh, help, everybody, help you become better, 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 more efficient on the ice. Can you find that website? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a little hard to see. It's just a uh, Dr. Auger E1. Dot Wix. Dot com slash Dr. Auger. We're going to get that. It's like short one these days, but uh, that's where you can, that's where it's a good it's a website where I'm going to be posting a lot of stuff uh, from here on out because uh, that's where I want people if they want to contact me. That's the place to go. But you, I got my my phone numbers listed on the website. My email. Um, feel free to send me any, any questions or. If you, want, if you want to go out, you know, I, like, I like taking people out. And otherwise, that's it, guys. Thank you. Any questions? Do you fish the lake trout much? You know, that's the one species that I really want to go after just to see what it would be like to catch a 15, 20 pound lake trout. But I have yet to do it. Um, there's a couple guys in town I, that go out there pretty regularly that I'm hoping to uh, get out with in one of these days. Uh, I know it involves some pretty big baits, uh, six, seven inch long smelt is what I've heard is a good one. 
and then you're fishing in anywhere from 60 to 110 foot of water, depending on where they're at. But uh, yeah, for that, I recommend uh, contacting with the rooster. They may know some people that smoke all this guys who can actually go there. I and mean, that's another good resource to use if you're looking at going out for the rooster. Those guys will give you give you, give you some truth and uh, some stories too. So. <laughs> The rooster, is there anything online that uh, has reports of lake activity? Around, around here, uh, <laughs> there is a site, I mean, it's, uh, I, I had to Google it, I think it's called like sdolist.com or something like that, but yeah, if you just Google search South Dakota Lake reports, you know, you know it'll be one of, the first, one of the first two on there. I use that uh, sometimes, it's not updated very, very regularly over the last year or so. I mean, I've got more postings on there than most anybody else does. From Deerfield, Sheridan, where I've gone out. Uh, if, you, if you go to that site, just look for Perch Slayer. That's me. Um, and uh, use it, but yeah, it's, 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 you, you, have, you have better luck using you know, using a local resource than using that in that case. Or every Thursday, you know, check the journal out for the fishing report. That's also a pretty accurate, uh, accurate report. How much you offer? That one there retails for 300 for both the suit, for both the top and the bottom. Um, you can buy them. There's other brands out there. I know uh, Cabela's, for instance, makes a makes a, a two piece or two like that for uh, 50 bucks less. But uh, you know, to keep you warm, to keep you dry, keep the wind off you, that's the that's the other definitely the way to go. I've been out in you know 30, 35 mile an hour winds with gusts in the 40s, with just that back to the wind. I felt the, I could feel the pressure of the wind, but I wasn't feeling the actual, you know, the, the chill. Do you have to layer on or anything? Um, it depending on the day, yeah. I usually wear just a sweatshirt. I usually just wear a sweatshirt and a, a t-shirt underneath. On um, the really cold days, if it's below zero, I'll throw on like an Under Armour, uh, you know, one of those, one of those skin, one of those skin tight ones that keeps the heat compressed against you. But usually, but for the paint for the bottoms, I just run blue jeans. That's no different from mine. Yeah, exactly. You can, you know, a lot of hunting hunt outfits are waterproof and windproof these days, so you can wear those exact same things out in the ice. You catch any bass at New England? I caught a couple of small ones uh, when I've been out there. I caught one the first time and then, and then a small one on the second day. So it's actually in that video that I took when I was out there. It's probably about that big, but I know there's some decent bass in there. Just got to find them. Bluegill butt, it was, the bluegill butt's going pretty good. The uh, ice was about seven inches when I was out there last week or this past weekend. Um, but you know, with this heat we've had lately, I'd probably be, I'd probably go out there. I'd be doing my five to ten foot drill just to make sure that the ice is uh, pretty good. The top will probably be a little slushy after this heat, but uh, you know, the bottom, you know, four, you know, five inches or so should still be pretty thick. Can you fish at um, Angostura? I have never caught a catfish through the ice yet. That would be. Uh, I've caught them on the caught them at the I've come up the river. And in north and winter, they're pretty good at that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it would be a lot of fun to fish with the ice, that's for sure. Scott, can you fish at Angostura? Angostura is kind of a kind of a weird lake. It uh, doesn't freeze. It's one of the last lakes to freeze up. It freezes up at all. Uh, right now, it's totally open. Um, there's still boat trip, There's still boats on it. Um, the, last, the last report came out today. It said there were still there were still boating down there, and the, but the walleye bite's pretty good because the water temperature has dropped. So it dropped. This warm weather, so the walleye bites is turned on quite a bit. It's turned on right now. I usually don't fish for walleye too much because it's kind of a waste to travel to either Belfouche or Angostura, um, especially when you can go you know, go in 40, you know, half hour, 45 minutes. You can go to a lake that you can pretty much you know, have safe ice and have a good have a good chance of catching a lot of you know, a lot of good sized fish. How deep water are you catching your perch in? Well, if, when I'm fishing out at Sheridan, um, I start fishing usually in about anywhere from 15 to 25 foot of water until I find them. I like to do a kind of, a, I like to drill about five or six holes in a line from shallower to deep and just get them to check my depths with the, uh, the finder. And if I see any fish, if I see any fish on there, I'll drop a line down right away. Um, but usually I'm about 15 to 25 foot. And then later in the winter, when you start moving to deeper water, then you're, then you're fishing in probably anywhere from 40 to 60 foot of water. But they're usually suspended in about in about, in about in the middle of the water column. Uh, I fished for them off the bottom before in the deeper water. Uh, there's not as many, they're not as big, and usually when you bring them up, you will have to keep them because even when you rope slow, 
that air bladder just pops out from the pressure change. So it's usually just, you can usually find them, they're, they're easy to find deeper water because when you're shooting, you can still see your body easy enough, then you're just going to see all kinds of, you know, all the fish will be in the water column. They're, they're really easy to see in deeper water when they're, when they're suspended like that. But, you will, but so if, you're in, if you're in deeper water, you will be hole hopping a lot because they will be moving through all the time. I, uh, I've seen guys drill 100 holes before just to, just to keep, just to keep, not run about those trials or traveling through the area. Um, my tend to do about, 15 to maybe 20 holes, just because I don't have a four-wheeler to drive around on, these things can get kind of heavy after a while, drain around the ice. Plus you have to carry your, plus you have to carry your fish finder too after the hole, all of that, so. What kind of live bait do you use? Uh, red maggots. That's my uh, bait of choice. You can only get them at the rooster. Um, uh, and if, if I'm fishing with dead sticks, if I'm just throwing a couple of baits like on, like on, the, Ar on the Arctic Warrior there, then I'll use small minnows. And usually hook them through either the gill area or I'll just barely hook it through their back so they can struggle around while they're on the hook. Um, if, I'm in, like if, I'm, if I'm staying one place in my shack, I will I'll usually drill through three holes. I'll have a hole for the sonar, I'll have a hole that I'm actually jigging out of, and then off to the side here, I'll, I'll, I'm here, I'll have a, a dead stick that I've, that I've kind of hooked up at the side here, and I'll just leave that, I'll just leave that sit down there, and then I've got kind of a two, you know, I've, got, I've got two baits down there once. If they're aggressive, I'll catch them on the jig. If they if they want some room on their face, not moving the disc, I'll catch them then. Um, but uh, if you're going to do something like that, if you do have, if you, if you do ever get a shack, I recommend if you're going to use dead sticks in the shack, use these these little clamps from uh, Cold Snap Outdoors, which you can only get online. You can only get online again, ColdSnapOutdoors.com. Uh, they just pick up right to your right to your shack, and you can put that line, put your pole right in there. Holds them nice and nice and sturdy, but this I used these last year. Worked really well. I just wanted to throw a dead stick down there. And another, you know, sometimes you know, there's some good accessories out there too, especially if you're fishing for bluegills and trout, and perch, because they do have smaller mouths than say your bass or your walleyes. Get something like this. This is a T2 toothpick that uh, Gold Snap came out with this year for two bucks. You know. You can, get, you can get in those little mouths and you can get those jigs out real, real easy with these. I'm going to fish struggle a whole lot. And this is called, it's called the T2 toothpick. Uh, these, are, these are shields. A T2 toothpick. These are shields for like two or three dollars. A little look accessory, but it's a, it'll, help, it'll, help, it'll help you get those fish into the hooks out of their mouths. And also with the, especially with tungsten jigs. Uh, they're great jigs, but if you rough house them trying to get the hook out, you might snap the hook off because of how they're made. This you will not, the hook will not come out if you're using these to get the, get the hook out of their mouth. What was that called again? A T2 toothpick. As I've seen the shields, I think uh, you can also make them too, but they're only a couple, like two or three dollars. Yeah, but those are the rooster. No, not the rooster. Is that water plastic? It is plastic. You pass it around. Yeah, I mean, just you know, little accessory like that can make things a lot, e a lot easier on you, on your, on your lure, on your, on your jigs, on the fish, and on you. You don't have to stick your hand in your mouth either, especially if they're a tooth for fish. I've used that before to get them out of walleye's mouths before. It works really well. What kind of jacket is that? What's the brand of it again? That is a clam. That's the clam. That's the clam ice armor, ice armor suit. So they sell them out there to Yep. Yep, they sent them out there to Bellas. Like I said, I, I got a hold of that one before I started working, before I worked there for five years. It was, uh, probably, you know, if I had to say it was one thing that really got me liking going out more, it was that. If I, if I, if I, didn't, have, if I, if I didn't have this, and I just had that, I'd, probably, I'd be okay. You can kneel on those and your knees don't get nope, sore. Nope, or I, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, even, even with the padding in the knees and the butt, you're still going to get a little sore if you're, if you're, if you're standing you're down here like this, you know, for an hour or two, even on hard ice, you're still going to, your knees are still going to hurt because your knees are padded, so it gives you a little bit of, you know, protection there from, so you can stay out a little bit longer, but, you know, if, if I can sit on, a, if I can sit on a seat or sit in my chair, that's usually what I'm going to do. If I'm running around, hole hopping a lot, and you know, trying to find perch, then yeah, then I'm going to be doing a lot of anymore, just because I'm not going to be hauling these around. Just hauling out my flasher, got my pole, and that's what I'm doing, just, I'm just running, checking, fishing. Nothing's there, I'm moving to the next hole. There's fish there, get down, start fishing. Um, so it's nice to have a little padding in the knees with those, with those, with those ice armor suits. Who's the biggest perch you've 
14 inches. Mm -hmm. I think I shared in three years ago. Your, your, your bigger, your big ones there tend to be your 12 and 13 inches. So that one was a, was a real nice one. I let it go, of course, but I uh, got some good pictures of it. But yeah, that's the biggest one I've ever got. Are you catching big, decent ones up there this year? I haven't been on Sheridan yet. I'm still waiting for. Well, this with this with this heat stretch, this heat year, I'm kind of I'm a little nervous about going out there right now. I might try next week when it's gets a little colder. I think it's supposed to get back in the 30s here pretty soon. Um, so I might go try the 3 to 5 area and try along that uh, where the cattails are at. In about 20, probably about 15 to 20 foot of water to start with. Just across from the swim, the swim beach. On the, that'd be on the north side. South side. The swim beach? Yeah. Well, the, the south side swim beach in the, three, in the 3 to 5 bay area. I guess there's, yeah, there's, one, there's, one, there's one the north marina and then one down in the 3 to 5 bay. So that'd be the 3 to 5 bay. That's where I'd be. So do you use the same stuff for perch as you do for trout? Yeah. Surprisingly, it all works pretty well. Um, I mean, on most of my most of my rods here, I've got the got stuff that works to both. Um, like I said, this one here, I've got the hand drop. That's my favorite jig. Works well for both sports, really for both species, especially perch. Um, I was using a, a white drop here when I was at Row Bay. You know, that, I've used this. I used the Sheridan last year. Worked really well for both species. So you don't have to change your change your presentation a lot for the for, for the for them. It's just a matter of what they're you know, do they want real bait, do they want platinum, are they responding to plastic? You might have to change your color up. I mean I've got you know, oodles of colors, different things to choose from on both, on both sides here. So uh, you know, I, just, I kinda let like the fish turn whatever I want. As far as even the spoons, all this all the same spoons look at the same fish. And these these buckshots here caught me caught both species for me. Have yes, these buckshots do have rattles. As do these, these are Lindy flyers here. They have rattles as well. And I've got some of those bomb spoons from my back. Someone came out with really good for deeper water at Sheridan, just because they can get down there pretty quick. And this flat top that they've got shows up really well on a flasher screen. And I bought some crappie and bluegill. What's that? How about for crappie and bluegill? So uh, these uh, these bomb spoons work great on crappies. I've used these lower ones here on bluegills last year. Those work pretty well. You could probably catch you can catch both species on them. I said I haven't I haven't had a chance to, I haven't had a chance to try out these, uh, these 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 time bombs yet. But I'm thinking with the noise that they make, those should work really. They're probably not, they might be a little big for all but your bigger but bigger bluegills, but crappie should eat these things alive with the, with the noise that they make. This is a time bomb spoon, clam time bomb spoon. This one's available in like five different colors. I like the green chartreuse and the orange chartreuse uh, patterns. I'll say, I'll, I'll say this as far as colors go, um, you know, chartreuse getting green works really well. Uh, your, your reds work really well. And, if everyone's, and it's always good to have a white and a blue in there too. If it's a combination of two or if it's just the individual colors. Um, if you're using a split shot, yeah. Is there like a, what are you, how far above the jig like this? Anywhere from ten, 8 inches to a foot. 8 inches to a foot. Not too, not too far. I mean, you don't want the way up here, but you want it to be close enough for you to help get the lure down. I mean, I've got some, you know, I guess I've, I got some regular lead jigs in here. You know, if I'm fishing in shallow water, the you know, lead's fine, you know, 20 foot. You know, lead, lead works pretty well if the fish, if the fish aren't moving through fast. Um, I've even got some, you know, I've got some smaller ones in here. They have a size 22 hook. They are tiny. And they don't, they, that, I put a split shot of those above them because it just, it just doesn't get down there fast enough even in, even in 20 foot of water. But, uh, yeah, if you're, if you're gonna, if you're, if you're gonna use just regular lead in smaller jigs, yeah, just stick a little, 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 Well, I can, I'll, I'll do the drawing now. If, uh, if you have any questions, please just come up and see me after the, afterwards. And uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions you got. But, uh, the drawing, we'll do the drawing here.